Adolph Boulder, you mean? Al Brooks yeah, reveled w. in being Michigan's Mr. mouth Mr. that uh, roared. Mr. Boulder? No, I don't. Uh, I, look at the look. Well, isn't that a little over the top? Yeah, the I want it to be. A man of great humor, he walked a very fine line between the comic and the controversial. Oh, yeah, we've only investigated 1,067 so far. This is old film of the gravelly-voiced Patterson in the early 1980s when he served as Oakland County's Take No Prisoners prosecutor. Born Lewis Brooks Patterson in Detroit on January 4th, 1939, he was a twin. Product of Catholic school education, he attended the University of Detroit High School, got a bachelor's there, and graduated from the U of D Law School in 1967. Patterson first put himself into the public eye two years later by representing Pontiac families against government-mandated school busing. From that boisterous platform, he won four terms as prosecutor. Then after four years in regular law practice, he ran for Oakland County Executive, and his business acumen blossomed once he got into office. He became one of the nation's best county administrators, bringing Oakland County the highest bond ratings, a near three quarter of a billion dollars surplus, and trailblazed with three and even five year rolling budgets that kept the county flush while the city of Detroit and Wayne County scraped bottom financially. There goes my uh, trip to the mansion this summer. <laughs> His humor endeared him to Oakland County voters, but didn't always south of Eight Mile, where he showered his disdain for the city's mismanagement. Many Detroiters claimed him a racist, most infamously in 2014, when the New Yorker did an article on him titled, Drop Dead Detroit, quoting Patterson as saying, quote, what we're going to do is turn Detroit into an Indian reservation where we herd all the Indians into the city, build a fence around it, and then throw in the blankets and the corn. That's a 20, 25 year old quote. But you bring it forward to put it out there today, and it's gonna make a lot of people angry. To those people, I apologize. The former prosecutor also once found himself in some serious legal trouble. To the charge of reckless driving, how do you plead? No contact. In 2003, Oakland County Sheriff's deputies stopped his car after he'd mixed alcohol with painkillers. Sometimes you're the bug and sometimes you're the windshield, and today is definitely a windshield kind of day for me. He ended up serving probation in this. The deputies suspended without pay for not giving the big boss a field sobriety test. Patterson docked himself the same amount and donated it to charity. He also knew tragedy. In 2007, his 32-year-old son Brooks died in a grisly Genesee County snowmobile accident. I've been blessed. Uh, I had four, now three beautiful kids. The one I lost, that's where I can get myself into you know, a terrible situation. I don't think you ever get over that. In his son's memory, Patterson started the Brooksy Way Half Marathon at Oakland University, and it became a Southeast Michigan staple. It seemed like nothing's really going right in Michigan. We in the media always sought Patterson's political opinion for a guaranteed good soundbite. He had a good relationship with most politicians, Detroit Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick among them. But when Kwame's legal problems grew painfully destructive, L. Brooks was also one of the first to say publicly, He really is helpless. Uh, and he's pulling the city down with him, so you should step aside. Patterson tried and failed in a gubernatorial run, thought about it again in 2010, made these wine bottles to reflect the idea, but he backed off. He had a devastating brush with death in 2012. He and his former police officer driver weren't wearing seatbelts when their black Chrysler 300 slammed into a car that jumped the blinking yellow light at Opdyke and Walton Road on a rainy August afternoon. In the hospital for months, he rode around in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. In 2019, the seemingly indefatigable Patterson held a news conference and through tears announced he had stage four pancreatic cancer. You never want to look <coughs> uh, family members or close personal friends in the eye because that's when it starts to kick in. Yet, even staring death in the eye, he did not lose his trademark sense of humor. Later, he spoke with Local 4's Devin Skillian about getting his diagnosis. How much time do I have? He says, I don't know. Only God knows. Said, you gave my health records to Nancy Pelosi? <laughs> and he starts laughing. He says, that's what I want to see is attitude. Attitude is up to 90% of how we're going to win this fight. To the end, he understood his controversial celebrity stood separate from his job. I think it'll be in every obit, but um, 
So they bring in all the other things. <laughs> and back in the 2014, and once again, he put his foot in his mouth. Now, I had to say, on balance, uh, I'm going to be seen as an uh, innovator, a very good manager, a guy that brought the best team in government together and then gave them their head and then was smart enough to get out of their way.